enlightenment is all about the individual cultures traditions rituals habits fallouts they come later after the individual is gone enlightenment is one such thing which almost entirely belongs to the individual right from the beginning the quest to realize oneself and to slowly expanding one's awareness and understanding of things to a point where nothing is left unturned every stone is turned every page is flipped every scripture is read an individual becomes everything it is a mysterious phenomenon which cannot be easily understood as an observer because the most important parts of the transformation is altogether hidden for the observer even for you to observe while you're walking on the path to see how much you're progressing how many things are changing how much of the baggage called you you have already left behind it takes time it requires a keen sense of observation it requires your ability to compare two different states of being because the change is not happening in the realm of thoughts you still have the same thoughts you still have the same body but it's happening in a way that only if you are in touch with the state of your being every moment you experience yourself in a certain way with a certain intensity there is no way an observer can get a sense of this definitely not someone who's just watching all these things as a spectator but unfortunately most people want to be spectators they want to know what's happening but they don't want to put their minds and bodies on the line that is why all the scriptures emphasize on the bringing together of the mind body and the spirit through a meditative alchemical process it cannot be simply ritualistic it cannot be just chanting of mantras or remembering a few verses or being obedient to a certain religious doctrine it requires a little more it definitely asks for more commitment more effort and willingness to go through the process in this sense all traditions agree that it has to be done by you especially the mystical traditions which are holding on to the direct teachings of the masters of the awakened ones always emphasize that here is the individual who is an example his teachings are the way but you have to walk the path you should be willing to change everything putting self realization above everything your worldly desires your self identity what you have been up until then doesn't matter 
it requires a major shift, especially if you have been fully identified with a particular way of life and you have been appreciated for that, you've been recognized for that, you have found comfort doing that. It's a lot harder. But all traditions agree that if you are not willing to make this change, this is not for you. You would simply be contemplating on self-realization, philosophizing about it, but you won't actually be doing something about it. Enlightenment is all about doing, not on the outside, but on the inside. Again, sounds very contradictory. How can doing lead to enlightenment? Non-doing has never led to enlightenment because for us as human beings, non-doing means simply laziness. And pursuing a meditative path to awakening is the least laziest of paths. Again, for the observer, it seems like, oh, it's so simple. You just have to sit, move a little, be aware, concentrate on the body, concentrate on the mind. But the amount of focus it requires, dedicated, persistent application of pressure to a particular area till it breaks open is a very active process. Sometimes it's tiring as well. There is nothing passive about a meditative journey. But somehow language does not accurately capture the essence of meditation. Either it makes it sound like it is about doing nothing or you have to do so much and so many things have to fall in place, your past life, your karma, your teacher's words and your intelligence, it is too rare a phenomenon. It's not for you. But in actuality, self-realization does not belong to these extremes. With the right understanding, with the right amount of effort, with the right practice, you can get there. Buddhism captures the basic tenet of this right approach beautifully. At least in the scriptures, it is there. Right speech, right action, right practice. Just moderation in your activities. Avoid the extremes, stay on the middle path and just keep inquiring. When you feel lost, when there is uncertainty, when you're not sure if what you're doing is right, trust in the teacher's words. Many a times, if it is an authentic teacher, an individual who has realized the ultimate, the words would be very authoritative, unmistakable. For example, in the Gita, Krishna says, whenever there is decay of righteousness, O Bharata, there is exaltation of unrighteousness, then I myself come forth for the protection of the good, for the destruction of evildoers, for the sake of firmly establishing righteousness, I am born from age to age. Sounds very religious, but it isn't. He's talking about birth of the seed of truth amidst of lies. 
every so often an individual finds the strength to become the truth to go all the way to unlock the mysteries of the mind mysteries of the body not accepting borrowed answers to satisfy to find some comfort to be firm enough to say i want to know the truth i want to become the truth it is not enough i am introduced to concepts of truth what do i do with concepts of truth i have to know what death is i have to know what happens to the body after death what is my life why am i here is there any purpose to it most people don't ask these questions they are concerned about entirely different matters we live in a world of deception we live in a world of lies that we have weaved for ourselves it's our stories our concepts our ideas and we try to find meaning amidst of these lies once in a while there is a lightning strike and it hits so forcefully that you have to stop whatever you're doing and take note of it this is what happened when jesus came out of the cave and said spread the good news and what happened after that is a lightning strike humanity has never been the same since then but it's one individual that is the power of truth when an individual realizes the truth it does not matter that he is completely outnumbered by those who do not believe in him who do not understand him who see him as a liar as something evil eventually truth has its way of drawing people to it unfortunately it does not reveal itself unless someone is putting the effort but it definitely draws them to it the reason why people have gone to jesus for thousands of years again and again and again although none of them have become enlightened you can count the christian mystics who have reached to awakening on your fingertips it's the world's largest religion with billions of followers so the truth is drawing them there is something they cannot explain it is not just story telling because if it's just story telling after you know the story you lose the fascination why do you have to keep going back again and again you pick up a book and read a fascinating story maybe you read it a couple of times and you put it aside it is not just a story there is something there it is not just dramatics subconsciously something is drawing people to those words but without their effort without going through that alchemical process themselves the truth does not become theirs it does not reveal itself to them the emphasis has to be on practice but if the objective is to reach as many people as possible to spread the news as far and wide as possible as quickly as possible you won't have time for depth you move horizontally but you don't go vertically you don't spend enough time with the individual this is the same problem with almost all the religions the preachers the teachers the monks the people who are, who have taken the responsibility of spreading the faith don't have enough time to spend with the individual most importantly with themselves 
to churn these words into truths and then to be offered to individuals. It's a process, slow, gradual process. You have to spend more time in silence than preaching. 